the photography industry in Africa is worth over 30 billion dollars. The industry has seen a tremendous amount of growth over the last 10 years and yet we are yet to actually start. In the next few years we are going to witness an explosion of growth in this industry that has not been witnessed before. My name is Shinwa Kisomi and I'm here to host a program that we call the Gospel of Photography. On this show, we'll be discussing issues, trends, and different aspects of the business of photography with the ultimate goal of actually making you a better photographer or a better photography client. Let's put it that way. Okay, there are different segments in which we'll be bringing personalities in the industry that will be sharing their experiences, some good, some not so good. But by the time you are learning from these experiences, we hope that you wouldn't make the same mistakes that some of these people actually made. One thing I want us to actually be conscious of is the fact that this show is actually a partnership between us and you, the viewer. And when we call it a partnership, this is where it works. You actually send in your suggestions or questions, whatever you think will actually make this program a better program, whatever you think will make it more viewable or more entertaining, more insightful, more inspirational. Send us your suggestions at gospelofphotography at elophotos.com. And should you by any chance, for any reason at all, miss any episode, feel free to log on to our YouTube channel right after watching this to view the current episode that has just finished, okay? So that gives you the opportunity to download it, watch it over and over and over again until you get the juice of the episode. Stay tuned and we'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back. At this junction, I feel it is important we actually try to break down the different segments that we have for this show so that you have an idea of what this program, the Gospel of Photography, is all about. For every episode that we bring your way, there is going to be a topic that we'll attempt to address. Maybe somebody send me a particular issue in which they are having with a wedding client or even is the wedding client that sends me an issue that they have with a photographer. This might be the basis of the topic that we'll discuss. Okay, and then we'll move from that to what we call the photo news. In this segment, you'll be learning about news in the industry, news that you as a photographer will definitely benefit from. For example, did you know that Canon just released their highest megapixel image sensor SLR ever, that's the Canon 5DS. It's actually important to know, especially if you are a portrait or wedding photographer. So under this segment, Photo News will be sharing, you know, stuff like that. There's also another segment we call the Photo of the Week. And this is quite interesting. This is where you actually get to send in all your favorite pictures. And we get to choose the pictures that we feel has this wow effect and then we showcase it okay so go through all your archives through your phone and regardless of how funny or seemingly stupid the picture is send it and if it's you know doesn't come up as one of the photo of the week we still get to feature it on our facebook page anyways the next segment which i feel is quite interesting is actually called the questions and answers segment. I'm sensing that this will be one of the biggest segments of the show because this is where you get to send in your questions, any questions whatsoever, as long as it is related to photography. Okay? We've had people ask questions like what camera should I buy? What dress should I wear when I'm going to cover an event? Which amount is okay to start a photography business? No question is too stupid. As long as it's relating to this photography industry, we are assuming that you don't know that's why you're asking it and we'll do our best to answer every single question that you bring our way. Yes, we're just good like that. We'll answer every single one of them. In the next okay. segment, we'll have what we call the personality of the week. Somebody that 
will definitely inspire you by the time you spend six minutes listening to their story, to their mistakes, to their successes. Somebody that has actually played an active role and hopefully is still currently playing an active role in the photography industry. Once you listen to them, you will definitely want to be a better appreciator of photography or a better photographer. The final segment is just a very short segment where we actually recommend either a website or an Instagram page that we think you know you guys really need to check out. For example, the first Instagram page we'll be recommending for this first episode is I don't want to let the cat out of the bag yet. Just stay tuned and we'll be right back. Hello, my name is Tai Olawa. I am a blind photographer. Keep watching the gospel of photography. Welcome back. Perhaps I should give us a very brief introduction as to how I got into photography in the first place. You see, I actually didn't plan to be a photographer. I started out wanting to be an accountant. An accountant because my dad was an accountant and he was my number one role model. But fast forward to my university days when in year three, I remember taking this class, financial accounting, and the class was so tough that I eventually discovered that Perhaps this accounting thing wasn't for me. A year earlier, my mom had come visiting and my university was actually a school in America. That is the Southern Illinois University at Edwardsville. My mom came visiting and asked me an interesting question. She asked him, what do you want for a Christmas gift? I remember telling her a camera and I remember getting my first Samsung film camera. I still have that camera today, though it's not working. I'm hoping that it will be worth something, you know, a few years down the line. But eventually I discovered that photography became a hobby of mine. That was 1998, December. Eventually I finished my accounting degree, came back to Nigeria, and I could clearly remember that day that I sat down in a meeting with my dad. Come to think of it, I actually didn't sit down. I stood up. He was sitting down. And it was a scenario in which the destiny of my life was about to be determined. And here was my dad telling me, Sheung, now that you're an accounting graduate, you have to go to Yaba and pick up an ICANN form because what accounting graduates do next is to do ICANN. But that was when I discovered and told him that, Dad, I don't think I want to be an accountant anymore. He was furious. He was frustrated. I could remember him using the words, you are not serious. What do you mean you don't want to become an accountant? You think you're in America where you can do as you please? He eventually reported me to some uncles, to some aunties, but I wasn't bent on changing my mind. In fact, I actually thank God that I was against it then because if he hadn't discouraged me from pursuing the career, perhaps I would not have put all my energy into it. I eventually told him that dad, my photography is going to be a different one. The word that I used then was psychedelic. And because it didn't give me his support then, I made up my mind that whatever I would do in this photography industry, I would make a mark. 10 years later, my photography career is one that I have no regrets whatsoever about. In fact, my dad then, that was seemingly discouraging me then, has actually turned around and been one of the biggest investors we've had in our business. He's one of my number one supporters. And perhaps his you know, fears were actually justified because the photographers he knew in those days, and when we're talking about those days, we're talking about 10 years ago, the photographers he knew were actually poor people, in quotes. And so he was scared that, so you mean my son, after sending him to America, will end up a poor man? 
Eventually, I think I was able to cancel all his fears. Now I am someone I will call a professional photographer. And over the years, the experiences that I've gotten, it's interesting how many people have approached me to ask questions that I thought was simple, was a given. But they were asking because they didn't know. And for me, maybe what made matters worse then was because there were really no mentors, no people to actually learn from. And that is one of the major reasons why we came up with a program like this to share with you that is just starting out in the industry or those of us that are currently in the industry and having some challenges to give you tips on how not to make the same mistakes that we made earlier in those days on how to make your photography business a more profitable business on how as a photographer to end up building your own house many photographers right now can't build a house or even buy a car with what they earn we're about to take the world industry to the next level and that is the bottom foundation upon which the gospel of photography is built so it's not just also for the photographer it's for the parents that thinks photography is nothing it's for the clients that think ah, is it not just to take pictures it's for the average person that this industry will be impacting that's that that's how i started here's where i am now and we're still going places at this next section we'll be talking about the questions that some of us have actually sent in over the last few weeks and the first one that actually comes to mind is one that was sent in by a gentleman here in lagos state nigeria and the interesting question was asking was mr Sheung, which camera do you recommend i buy although i am not going into commercial photography i am just going into photography as a hobby and i just want to practice which one do you recommend that i get and my interesting answer to the person was the camera phone that you are using to text me this question and i'm guessing that perhaps he probably would have laughed when he saw that answer the truth is i strongly believe that nobody should have to strain themselves financially just because they want to get a camera especially if you are not ready for the business of photography yet so until you are really ready to make money with it i think you should go for the camera that you can easily afford and for you if easily affordability means twenty thousand naira, go for the one that falls within that range don't think that ah canon just release its camera this is the best one that i have to get and you go and borrow you know money just to buy it no okay the next question actually was sent by a gentleman somewhere in joss also in nigeria and he was asking me mr Sheung, which business name should I give for my business? Should I go ahead with my personal name, which happens to be a 10 syllable name? I mean, the name is quite long. Or should I come up with a creative, you know, funny, interesting name? And my answer to that is it actually depends on the brand and structure that you actually want to be known for. You see, when I started Hello Photos years back and decided to name the organization Hello Photos Studios, I was looking at a day in the future where somebody will come into our organization and would not insist that it must be me that must take the picture. As long as they have anybody that we've trained cover whatever they need to be covered, you know, whether in photography, whether in video or whatever, they will be satisfied. But if I had named it right then, Sheung Akisomi Photography, there's a good chance that there will be more stress on my shoulders. So that's why I named it Hello Photo Studio, so that all the jobs must not always be done by me. Interestingly enough, about two years ago, I actually created another brand called Sheung Akisomi Studios, in which if somebody now comes and say they want Sheung Akisomi Studios, which of course that person could be you, the thing is they must be ready to pay a premium price for Shenwa Kisome Studios. So it really depends on the structure that you want to come up with. Whether you want one situation in which you are the one taking and doing all the jobs or you want to create a team of people that will be doing the jobs. It depends on you. So that's that for this segment, questions and answers. Remember, whatever questions you have, as long as it's relating to photography, don't hesitate at all. And I mean it, don't hesitate to send it to the email address on your screen, gospelofphotography 
at hellophotos.com. You could always tune into our YouTube channel and watch the entire episode over and over and over again till you get the juice of it. Okay, at this segment, we actually are going to take you to a classroom, one of the classes we had during the first edition of the Nigeria Photography Expo and Conference. This is one of the platforms where photographers gather together, not just to network, but also to learn about how to take their photography to the next level. Okay, stay tuned as we all, including me, go to this exciting class. My name is Judy Alakija. I'm taking the lighting and composition uh, class at the uh, NIFA conference today. I would like them to feel a bit more uh, updated in their own knowledge. Um, I think I want to give them the opportunity as well to share something um, of what they also know and also to test what they understand, what lighting and composition is about. Um, and of course to be inspired as well by anything that I can possibly bring and also myself to be inspired as well. Right, I've been taking photographs, uh, let's see now, since November 2004. I became professional in uh, November 2007. So I think we can do the maths and work that out to be about, what, seven years now? I think Knifevik is an amazing idea, first of all. and absolutely amazing concept. Um, I think it's something that really has kind of been something that's been required in, in, in our society here in Nigeria for quite a while. Um, we've been through a long period of very very sort of little training and information updates uh, over the past few decades and NIFEC I think is sort of coming in to do that uh, hopefully it would stay here and grow on beyond what we have today. I think it's an amazing opportunity for anyone who is a photographer or anyone who wants to learn uh, as a photographer and anyone who is sort of a professional photographer. Most of you probably know that I'm a wedding photographer. I mean, how many of you have seen any of my works online? Yeah? At least half the class. Okay, well, the rest of you, if you can just go to www.alakija.com. That's all. Yeah? <laughs> all right. Um, anyway, so I can start with, I can tell you a funny story. Um, one morning, I, um, I had this really big wedding that I had to cover. Um, and I forgot to set my alarm to wake me up at, uh, I think it was 7 o'clock in the morning. I put 7 p.m. and I know it, you know, how many people have had that experience? You know, you put p.m. instead of a.m. So that's what happened to me. I had uh, the thing set up and um, I think according to my timing, I was supposed to leave my house at 8 o'clock in the morning and I woke up at 8 o'clock in the morning and it was dark and I just woke up, just put on my clothes. I don't even think my batteries were charged. At least I had a few batteries and just put my shoes on, got into the, um, into the car, drove off to the train station, went into the train, and then I now sat down, and um, everyone just started looking at me really strangely and really weirdly, and I was like, ah, why is this guy staring at me like this? You know, have I got something on my So I kept on looking at my chest and everything, and they were just looking at me. I got to the wedding, I was taking photographs, Everything seemed to be going really great. I was like, ah, for you know, a day that I've not really started really well, um, it, everything you know is going well. I have half battery, but I'm getting all my shots. And then I got to the reception, and um, President Yakubu Gawon was the chairman, and he came up to me and says, "Young man, is this a new style?" I was like, "What?" And I looked at my feet, and I was wearing two different pairs of shoes. <laughs> it's a true story, and. I made that mistake because when I woke up, I didn't turn on the light to see what I was doing, right? And I think that's the whole point here. It's all about light. And I'm not, this is not a lie. This is a true story. But I thought it's really appropriate to kind of start how important light is when it comes to photography, right? Um, okay, so what is the uh, point of light? Um, the point of light really is to focus the viewer's attention and really to highlight detail. Like in our experiment that we've just done outside, I kind of demonstrated how 
light can change an image just by moving the object or even moving the light. You saw different expressions in light. And that's purely all it is. I think when you understand that concept, or rather when you understand how important what you're doing is as a photographer, all you're doing is capturing light. And you now have to see things in light. My very good friend here, Lumi and I, we worked together quite a few times. And um, I remember there was, not to kind of put him down in any way, but I think, was it? Said this to you. And I said to him, I was like, you see, but you don't observe. No, it was Demi. And I said to him, you see, but you don't observe. And that's a really famous line from um, a fictional tale called Sherlock Holmes. How many of you have heard of Sherlock Holmes? Yeah, you've heard of Sherlock Holmes. All right, so Sherlock Holmes says to Watson, you see, but you don't observe. And I thought, when I heard that the first time, I thought that was so pertinent. And it made so much sense. In the sense that you can walk around, and you're seeing a picture or a situation but you're not really observing the light as it comes to you like i always say to the people i work with when you're looking at what you're looking at do you understand or can you fathom the amount of light darkness temperature all that stuff that is going on on what you're looking at and in the whole scene for instance, now, when we put Michael at the back, I asked what you saw, and there were different things that you're all saying, and your mind is seeing all these things, but how much of that have you observed? How much of the background have you observed? So, for instance, now, you put someone in front of a dark background, and you put the same person in front of a light background, how does that impact your picture? And sometimes we do that. Sometimes we actually put them in two different backgrounds. And we're like, oh, they're different. But we never really bother to ask ourselves, why are they different? What looks better? What, what, what situations make a picture better? Um, I'm going to go even talk about even color, which is another form of light, right? Um, I remember saying to someone that if ever you're in doubt and you're doing a portrait of someone and you want it to be really striking, tell them to wear something red, right? And the person thought, why? I said, just look in this room. In fact, just look around. The people you notice are only the people wearing red. Why? And it's something to, sorry, I didn't mean to. <laughs> I'm not used to that. But it is something that we catch our eyes catch like instantly. There's a reason why the stop sign is red. There's a reason why danger is red. It's through the psychology and studies, they realize that red is the first thing that eyes catch on to, right? Um, and then blue kind of give you the whole you know, feeling of coolness. Gray is a bit dull. And it's not so much that that's how it is. It's just how you've kind of con been conditioned growing up. And these things affect how your pictures look. People always ask me, what have you done to this picture? How is this picture so amazing? Why does it look so good? And it's, only, it's all these elements that make up the lighting, that make up the picture. And it's how you control that that's really important. Hello viewers, my name is Jide Jokudola. Keep watching the Gospel of Photography. So welcome back from that you know, inspirational class. I really hope you learned a few things. Please send us suggestions, questions to our email address and we'll do our best you know, to refine our program to answer the questions and make this program actually better for you. At this junction, we've come to the end of this exciting first edition of the Gospel of Photography. But before we go, I think we actually should emphasize the importance of you sending your photos also, sending your pictures, the pictures that you consider as wow, so that perhaps by the time we go through it, we could end up featuring what you know we think is really the wowest of all the pictures as one of the photos of the week 
okay so just send it to the same email address with the subject line photo of the week and today's instagram page of the week is by a photographer that i respect and admire so much the guy is energetic and passionate a nigerian based documentary photographer by the name bio omobiro that's his instagram page on the screen right there do your best check it out follow him and let us know what you think okay we've come to the end of this exciting episode i really hope you learned a few things whatever suggestions you have remember you could send it to our email address if you happen to miss any of these episodes or you just want to watch it all over again you could also go to our youtube channel download it and watch it over and over again okay till we meet on the same station same time whatever you do please keep taking those pictures i'm shio akisomi and i'll still be here waiting for you.